Okay, we're loading into round number five against, I'm not going to butcher his name, Alcazar. <laughs> I read it before I said it. Oh man, we drew the Dreadnought in turn one. I mean, I'm still going to lead with Necro Eva because it's a really strong card. And, you know, Underdrop is a zombie Dreadnought's not the worst. If you play your region cards early, you can give them plus two, plus two, and have a five, three. I'm playing this in the this lane because I have Zombie Titan and I want. Actually, I want Formation. Uh, I do have Sky Knight Glider. It doesn't matter, I think. The upside of playing Sky Knight Glider is probably higher. I should just put this in the side lane, like the Necro in the side lane. Then play the Zombie Titan in the other side lane. That way, if I drew Sky Knight Glider Scourge Knights, I would have easy formation and mobility on the Scourge Knights. But, yeah, whatever. He just, like, immediately kills it with a Necromiba. <laughs> or with a uh, Severe Mount Fiend. I'm going to play a Zombie Titan in front. Uh, playing cards in front of Uterra is so risky. I guess I can just look at his hand first. It's probably the, my best bet. So if he has a Pump Spell, I'm not going to block. If he doesn't, I can. Sting Invocation. Huh. Okay, so his play is probably stinging a vacation into Abyssal Root, or maybe Grave Pact. Like, 100% he's playing stinging vacation this turn, which, meh, it's not great for me. Uh, and he can, he can sting a vacation and savage with this guy, which is why I'm not blocking his zombie time this turn. So I want to play Glim Reaper Witch, maybe? Or, or Zombie Titan. Okay, let's play Zombie Titan and hope that Uzling spawns right here, so he, he doesn't get value off uh, stinging vacation. Yeah, it's not really where I wanted it to spawn, but, you know, we're still good defenses against any location. Uh, we can put Gnarly Symbiote in front of a B. He could play Abyssal Brute, but he doesn't have any good block. He didn't have any good places to put Abyssal Brute. Uh, I can put Spirit Soul Infiltrator in front of this uh, Zithian Rot Fiend, and I can put Gnarly Symbiote in front of a B. So he makes a Seedling first, which means he's probably not playing Sting Invocation, or he's just great backing immediately, okay. Oh, he just didn't go for the Sting Invocation. He went for the uh, the Conservative play, which is probably better, to be honest. And I'm going to play Spirit Soul Infiltrator and Crucible Colossus in front of his Scatter Spore. Uh, Spirit Soul Infiltrator lives... Actually, you know what? Screw this. I'm going to play in front of the Abyssal Root. If I kill the Scatter Spore Tiller, uh, his next creature gets bigger off the Abyssal Root. Which is not something I want to enable. And my next turn's looking like Forge Guardian Delta and something else. Forge Guardian Delta is so huge. 7 7 11 11 17 17. That's really, really big. Uh, it has no downsides uh, while it's uh, in your hand. <laughs> in your deck, it does add cards to your deck, which makes your deck less consistent. But if you play it, if you draw it, you should definitely play it because it's a 7 7 with no downsides. Hmm. So he's got the Grove Matriarch. Makes his. Uh, Spring Dryad, really big. I think I'm probably going to end up blocking that with... I don't know, I need to chump it with something. This is some good seedlings value right here. Uh, so I'm going to kill the Tiller and then block the Spring Dryad with a Rot Fiend. It doesn't do all of its damage because it'll get plus two, plus two by the time it's you know my turn again. But it does damage it significantly. I want a level 2 Rafi in my deck against Spring Dryad decks because that's a 12-13, which is really big. And then I can block it with Necromiba. It's not the worst. Uh, unless he plays something that puts a ton of creatures into play. There's no way Necromiba doesn't live. So there's a Spring Dryad that gives this guy plus 1, plus 1. Or plus 2, plus 2, rather. If you always another one, like a uh, Scatter the Seeds or Netherwolves, I can't block with Necromiba. Because it would be an 11 11. So hopefully he just has one card. Yeah, okay. We'll block that with uh, Crystal Colossus. And Necromiba is kind of damaged by this. It goes down really low, actually. But I want to kill this, and it lives, which is really nice. Uh, alternatively, I could just block with Crucible Colossus. Leaves it at 2. That's probably worse than leaving it at Necromiva, because Necromiva goes to 7. 7-7 seven, is not that bad. And I'll block my block his uh, Grim Gaunt with my Defender. Get an Oozling in a side lane. 
I could jetpack my spirit stone level trader. I don't know if that's the play. I could also level up these forge guardians to have a uh, set up for my omega, but that's probably not happening. So <laughs> I'll try to restrain myself. Another scatter spore. This kills my guy. I can meta transfer it, and I'm probably definitely going to meta transfer it because it puts my forge guardian in eight fourteen. And he plays other wolves. Okay, it's a good turn from him. Uh, this is minus five, so it goes to four, so it would do eight damage to me, which would kill it, I think, right? Because it goes four damage down to three, then three up to six, then four again. Oh, actually, it doesn't kill it. Nice. Okay, so meta transfer this. We'll, put, we'll upgrade the Forge Guardian, and then we'll play Spirit Steel in the side lane. So that I already drew overwhelming forces, right? Yeah. Uh, so that the Oozling spawns in front of the wolf. Deal three damage to him there. Okay, my hand's pretty bad this time, so <laughs> hopefully he doesn't play his level 3 Spring Dragon. That would not be good for me. Uh, what have I got to draw on here? Just the Rot Fiend, Delta, Intruder, and Titan are my only level 2s left. So I've drawn quite a few of them, actually. I've drawn three level 2s already. So I'm probably going to end up playing Pulse Mage and... Or not Pulse Mage, Phantasm and Symbiote in all likelihood. Uh, it really depends on what this where this ooze goes as to what I'm doing. He's probably hoping that one in front of the Spirit Stone Infiltrator. Group meal. Hmm. That's pretty good. Kills my almost all my creatures actually. And I didn't get the uh, the oozling where I wanted it. Uh, I'm gonna block the Ether Wolves instead of the Flesh Fiend because the Flesh Fiend is only attacking me for eight. This attacks me for seventeen if I don't block it. So go ahead and kill that there, go to combat, then play the Phantasm where it used to be. Okay, now I get the, the Zombie Titan block on the Flesh Fiend, which is region 2, right? So it's not the best block, but I can shrink it with uh, Nixian Phantom if I really need to. And if I don't, I can shrink uh, anything for 4 and then maybe Gloom Reaper Witch it. So the only thing I can do that with is uh, the Sapling. Yeah, it might be worth it. It keeps my Crucible Colossus alive. Six. Okay, at least just trade. I could shrink its power so it doesn't trade. Uh, it would go to five. It would go to two, right? And it would. You would have to have a seedling to trade with it. I could call the weak it too, but that doesn't seem very good. I think my. Best play is likely to just let these trade and then play. Hmm, what do I want to do here? If I shrink this to kill, keep my guy alive, I have a 6 3. And this is an 8 7 that's attacking me. And I've got two. Well, actually, I'm leveling up, so I don't even have draws. So I'll, I'll be able to draw in for my whole deck. Uh, alternatively, I give this minus 4 power, so it'll be a 4 7. Not a big threat, but then my follow up play is pretty weak, and I lose my 6 3. So I think what I want to do is shrink this card, then play... Is Gloom Reproach with playing? This is 4 attack, right? So he kills Seedlings, which he has a ton of, but it doesn't kill Tree Folk. And it's still probably better to level Vault Intruder. I could even put it in front of the Grove Matriarch. Yeah, that's probably the best play. And he has an Abyssal Root and 2 AA Shimmer Fang, so his hand's not the greatest. Uh, unless he wants to go for the good old scattered seeds, or scattered the invocation, stinging invocation. Goodness gracious, that's definitely not the worst plan. Abyssal brute level two as a nine nine with regen two, so he could block my spirit still for free. We can just block this for free, or not for free. It takes damage. He's got a scatter here, right? He could savage with his guy to save it, but. I don't know, that doesn't seem very good. My, my plays are pretty bad, actually. I have to play Nixium Phantasm and Gloom Reaper Witch, I guess. Not looking too hot on that front. Uh, we're going to shrink this and then Gloom Reaper Witch the... Yeah, because shrinking this by 4 doesn't do anything. So we'll just shrink the uh, Shimmer Fang Serpent and then Gloom Reaper Witch it. I don't want to play cards on the side lane because he has a little 3 brute in his deck. So let's play... 
Phantasm in front of the seedling, because who cares about the seedling? Combat, Grim Reaper Witch, kill a uh, snake. Unfortunately, he gets a turn with the Abyssal Brood, but I couldn't stop that anyway. Not even with shrinking it. It sounds pretty good. I've got a little 3 Necromeba and a uh, Rock Pain, which is going to help because his next cards are going to get plus 2, plus 2, and regen 2. I've also got the rare Tower Cannon here, Forge Guardian Alpha Combo. That card is so big, so hard to kill. Uh, I'm probably just going to shrink it a bunch with the uh, Phantasm. That card's not nearly as bad. Because uh, even if he pumps that, I can just play cards in front of it and it, it gets smaller. Uh, the region 5 is super annoying though. Uh, so let's shrink this by 8. And then put a Necromeba in front of it. I haven't seen any pump spells from him other than... I mean, it doesn't even matter. He'd have to pump it for so much in order to get through. And this goes minus 3, minus 3 when I put things in front of it. So I want to put... An alpha in front of it, maybe? Yeah, I think that's probably for the best. I'm not really attacking with anything here. I could put a Zithian Rock in front of it. This is a lot more damage. Yeah, that's, I think that's better. That way I can almost kill it on the backside. Uh, probably just playing a Fell Strider in front of it now. Or, best case scenario, if the combat happens and then I spawn an Oozling in front of this, and then I can get free damage there. A free minus three minus three. Uh, or he can just replace it and make a bigger Vessel Brute. Cold the Week, my guy. That's pretty good. Because uh, that was definitely the best creature I had to play. <laughs> Even better than the uh, Necromeva. Because it was so hard to kill and it shrunk his guys. Any group meals? That's kind of strange. I can see why he do it, because he wants to kill Necromeva, but uh, he knows I have leveled up debuff cards. So I don't like it that much, and it's probably my best play right now to uh, better transfer this, and then pitch the... Uh, I don't have the level Dread Knight, it's probably best to pitch the Fell Strider. And then do I kill the Rot Fiend? Yeah, let's kill the Rot Fiend. Yeah, I don't want to get greedy. I was thinking I could play an 11-11 and race it, but yeah, there's no real reason to do that. Unless I plan on drawing all level 1 cards, which is <clears throat> super bad for me. Hopefully he also has a bit of uh, bad luck. That happens sometimes. He gets another turn with the stupid Abyssal Brute. Yeah, maybe I should have. I should have just ignored it, the eyes of the Rock Fiend. That way he doesn't get the free... The okay, it's just a level 1 Shiver Being Serpent, so his, his hand is pretty bad. Unfortunately, I have nothing to punish that. <laughs> Okay, so he kills the Necromeba with Sky Fortilla. I'm probably just going to play Overwhelming Forces and Zombie Dread Knight. Uh, that gives me a bunch of power on the board. And uh, Zombie Dread Knight levels up is way more important than any of these other cards. Because uh, I've got a level 3 Necromeba, a level 3 Phantasm, and some level 3 uh, Zombie Titan. <laughs> Ironically, I just immediately draw the Dread Knight, which, uh, you know, not the best. But I'll make do somehow. I do have the level 3 Forge Guardian Delta in my deck, which is 17-17. It's going to be the largest creature on the board by far. Get some good damage on here, but really I'm not doing anything with my turn. He plays level 2 cards, I've got a whole hand of full of level 1s. Uh, let's block the... I can't kill this, so I don't really want to block it. I think I just play Dread Knight in front of the 14 power creature, and then play Pulse Mage to give me better blocks for next turn. And play Pulse Mage in the side lane? In case he plays a Vessel Brute? That's probably not good, because that'll give regen 3. Okay, got a Phantasm and a Rot Fiend. That's a good start. Hopefully he... Has it similarly? I need him to have like one of those Shimmer Fang Serpents scatter the bees hands. So this dies, he gets a Tree Folk. I have a level 2 Gloom Reaper Witch, not a level 3. 
level two gets four power creatures, right? That's what the heck? I swore I clicked Glimmer for a Witch. Okay. It's kind of weird. Okay, yeah, there's the Abyss Brute. Okay, gonna have to figure out how to come back from this. I think step one is. Okay, what is step one? <laughs> Shrinking this card, playing Phantasm in front of it, taking a billion damage from this stupid Spring Dryad. Actually, you know, let's let's block the Dryad. Dryad's gonna get bigger than this root, so let's go ahead and put a stop to it now. Then we have a Spirit still infiltrated to block the uh, the Abyssal Underlord over there, and then Sharping Serpent's a hundred percent getting replaced this turn with something better. And then next turn I can shrink one of his creatures for minus 12, I think. Yeah, t minus 12 permanently, which is a huge deal. And then figure out where to go from there. Felstrader is going to be pretty important. Uh, I great packed it. Ugh. Okay. So he replaces this with something ungodly strong. Actually, he doesn't have to. Yeah, he could just do that. Uh, which is actually... Probably better for me. Because uh, I can kill the Chord Matriarch. I'm taking like 11 a turn. Uh, I could hope to get lucky. So this is 11, or I could just block the Seedling, or the Tree Folk, or the Grub Matriarch again, which is 14 damage, which is way more. Hopefully the zombie spawns in front of the Tree Folk. Uh, Symbiote kills the Snake, and then Crucible Crosses blocks something, hopefully. I don't have a whole lot of options here. Uh, that, that three turns or four turns in a row of drawing a bunch of underleveled cards was not good. My opponent didn't cooperate with the honor rule by doing the same. So, Scourge Knights is long past the point of being useful. I pretty much just got Crystal Colossus, Symbiote, and Glimmer for Witch in my hand. I can't play Overwhelming Forces, it just doesn't do enough. I mean, it does give my guy mobility 3, which is pretty nice. So I actually could use it to save it and maybe kill... A, if he plays a little 3 creature here, I can trade this for a little 3 creature. Uh, well, not anymore, because my zombie spawned in the only place I didn't want it to go. <laughs> and he just called it. Which means his hand was really bad. So that's good. Um, I get to kill all of his creatures except for a 5-5 five -five this turn, but I'm at 15. Uh, is it better to play the Glimmer Witch or the Symbiote? Glimmer for Witch level 3 kills Tree Folk. And I'm ranking up this turn, so I probably want to do that. Uh, which is probably worse than keeping a creature on the board, which is what Raleigh Symbiote does. Right? Because it's got 4 regen and 6 poison. That means it takes 2 damage a turn. So it hit go to 4, and then take 2, then take 2. So I'd actually just die. Okay, so Glimmer which is the better play. Because if I can't keep the Symbiote, there's no point in playing it. I mean, there is slight point because I have a Dread Knight in my play, and drawing a level 3 symbiote and a level 3 Dread Knight helps me keep a bunch of board presence. But that's pretty unlikely. Mm, I'm probably going to die to this Tree Folk. Take 5 here, then be unable to block it on my turn because he plays 2 threats, then take 5 and 5 again, that's 15. So hopefully he plays something with less than 5 power, and I don't have to block. Or he just blocks the Crucible Colossus. That's also a. An out for me. Okay, he we blocked the Crucible Colossus. Excellent. Unfortunately, he did so with a creature with five power. <laughs> Group meal. That's okay. So that's probably the best thing he could have done for me, honestly, because I was dead there, like a hundred percent. So let's see his hand. See how dead I am. I was seven. He's got a Spring Dread and a Sting Invocation. Uh, so hopefully I draw Glimmer for which next turn and play Zithian Rot Fiend, which dies to the Tree Folk because it gets minus 5, minus 5 on the way back down. Uh, he didn't have any debuff in his hand, so it's probably better just play Glider. Same, it's the same card, but this levels up in, in case we do end up going to a rank 6. Okay, Felstrider's a pretty good start. Um, though if he plays Stinging Invocation, I don't know how I win. He has to play uh, some... Sting Invocation and the bee has to spawn right in front of my Vault Intruder, and nothing else needs to happen. 
Right, that's like the out here. <laughs> or we could play Death Seeker, because I'm at seven. I, I don't know, a Sting Invocation was definitely better than Death Seeker there. Not that I can talk really, because I'm living on the edge here. Uh, so, take damage. Can we block the Tree Folk? Because it's a new Terra creature and he has Savage Oath in his deck. Uh, I can't stop Twin Strength from killing me either way. Glimmer for which kills the Spirit for free, which is a really good start. Hopefully the Felstrider blocks one of his good creatures instead of going out in the middle of nowhere. I'm probably going to have to jam the Glimmer Witch in front of the Spring Dryad, so hopefully the Felstrider doesn't spawn in front of the Spring Dryad. I'm at 2. I'm dead to Howl of Zeth if he has it. Oh, I'm just dead to that actually. So that gives Trample, so I'm dead. Okay, no reason to play the Grove Matriarch, but I guess he wasn't looking at his hand. Whew, that game was surprisingly close for uh, how poorly we both drew. <laughs> but, you know, happens sometimes. That leaves me a, what, like 3 1? 4 1? I think 4 1. Yeah, so. Still have at least one more game to play, hopefully three more games.